This video is a tutorial for Microsoft Outlook for the iPad. Outlook is a very powerful email app and incorporates other functions such as a calendar and cloud storage. Please take a look at the timestamps in the description below to see what I'm going to cover. When you first sign into Outlook on the iPad, you'll be asked to sign into your email account. Then all of the emails you've received will be loaded into this app as you can see here. In the top left corner of the screen, we can see this icon, which is shaped like a house. A menu will appear on the left hand side. We're now going to spend some time looking at the different options available to us here. In the bottom left corner, we can see a settings icon. There are lots of important settings here, which are definitely worth checking out. The first of which allows us to set Outlook as the default email app. If we click on this, our settings application will open. In this menu, we can see all of the things that Outlook currently has access to. At the bottom of the screen, we can see an option to set the default mail app. If we click through, we can choose which app should be that default. If you'd like it to be Outlook, make sure you click on that icon. Further down in the settings window inside Outlook, we can see a list of all the accounts we're currently signed into. Each one of these accounts has its own settings. We can change the name of the account. We can turn on or off suggested replies, automatic replies. We can block external images. We can save contacts. And we also have the option of reporting messages. At the bottom, we can delete the account from Outlook entirely. Further down on the settings window, we can now see we have access to storage accounts. These are cloud storage accounts, for example, Google Drive. If we would like to add another email account or a storage account, we can do that by clicking on the relevant option. For storage, we can add things like OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive or Box. These provide convenient ways of adding attachments to your emails, which is something we'll have a look at later on. Further down on our settings window, we can see notifications. For each email account, we can see what type of notifications we should get. You'll notice in Outbox we have something called Focused and Other, which is something I will explain a bit later on. For each one of those options, we can choose which notifications we receive, or whether we receive any at all. We can also decide on what the sound should be when an email is received. Back on the settings menu, the next item allows us to decide which should be our default email account. If I click on new email inside the app, it will automatically send an email from this address. We do have the option inside the new email window to change that. And I will show you that a bit later on. The next option allows us to set a signature. It's possible for us to have a different signature for each different account we have signed in. And we can toggle this here. In the box below, we can begin typing in our custom email signature. This will appear at the bottom of every email we send. We do have some very basic editing options here. If I use my cursor or my finger to select some text, a contextual menu will appear. We can see we have the option of making the text bold, italic or underlined. The next option is something you'll definitely want to set up. It's called Swipe Options. You'll notice inside this app, all emails are displayed as a list on the left hand side. We have some really handy shortcuts available to us on this side of the window. If I swipe left over an email, we can set it up to do one thing. And if I swipe right over an email, it allows us to do something else. At the moment, I have it set up. So if I swipe right, it will mark the email as read or unread. And if I swipe left, it will delete the email entirely. You can change this, however, from delete to archive or you can do things like flag or unflag an email or to move it. Snooze is a particularly good option if you find yourself coming back to emails later on. The next option allows us to turn on or off a focused inbox. This is where Outlook will categorize your emails. 
Focus is the emails it thinks will be most important for you to read straight away. The other option is called Other. This gives us emails from things like newsletters and mailing lists that might not necessarily be urgent. The next option is for a badge count. On the home screen of your iPad, a red circle with a number inside will appear, telling you how many emails you currently have unopened. You can decide whether that should be all emails or just the things from your focused inbox. The next option allows us to combine emails in a thread together. If I'm having a long email conversation, if I turn on organized by thread, if I click on one email, all conversations within that thread will be visible, regardless of when they were sent. If I turn this off, emails will be organized strictly by when they were sent. My last few options allow me to show contact photos, how my contacts list should be organized, and I have some settings for my calendar, including notifications, what the default email for the calendar should be, whether I want to display weather alerts, when the week should start, and whether or not I want to display week numbers. Below this, I have the option of setting up Siri shortcuts, allowing me to use Siri's voice commands to do quick actions. Below that, I can connect Outlook's calendar to some other apps like Evernote, Facebook, or Meetup. You can also subscribe to existing calendars, for example, for things like sport. The last section is called Preferences. And in here, we can change the appearance of the app, where we want to enable light mode or dark mode, or follow whatever the system setting is. We can also change the color of the app. And finally, we can choose between a light or a dark icon. Below this, we can turn on or off Face ID, which means our face will be checked every time we open the app to make sure it's us. And then we can set some default apps for the browser and for navigation. Let's take another look at that menu on the left hand side by clicking the home button again. Here we can see our different accounts and the folders for them. By default, it's set to inbox. But we can have a look at drafts, our archive, sent items, deleted items, or we can check our junk folder. It is possible for us to add other folders to this list. If I go to view an email, if I have a look at the blue toolbar at the top, the third icon from the right is three dots. Let's take this existing email and move it to a different folder. I can click on move to folder. Here are the folders I currently have available. And in the top right of this screen, I have an icon that allows us to create a custom folder. That email has now been moved to my new custom folder. To view that folder, I can click on the home icon in the top left corner of the screen, choose the email account, and now my new folder is displayed. On this home menu, you'll notice next to the all accounts text, to the right, we can see a bell icon. This allows us to turn on do not disturb mode. This will prevent notifications from reaching us for a set amount of time. So let's talk about reading emails. As discussed before, we have two types of inboxes. We have focused and other. Focus is the emails that Outlook thinks we really want to see first, and other will contain other emails that might not be as important. To view an email, I can just click on it. You'll notice we had some options about swiping earlier. If I use my finger and swipe to the left or right, you can see I can mark it as read or unread. If I swipe the other way, I can delete the email entirely. If I'm using a trackpad, put your cursor over the email and do a two fingered swipe to the left or to the right. It is possible for us to filter this list of emails to look at very specific items. In the top right corner of this panel, we see an option called filter. I can view just my unread emails, emails that I flagged, only emails with attachments, 
or any emails that mention me. For each email we receive, we have a menu of different options. To do something with this email I currently have open, I can click on the three dots in the top right corner of the screen in the blue bar. This is where I moved an email to a different folder earlier on. I can also report this email as junk, or I can snooze this email, which means I will receive it again as a new email later on if this is something I want to come back to at a different time. You can print this email if you want to, or you can ignore this conversation, which means you won't receive any notifications about it in the future. You can also mark this email as unread, and you can flag it if it's of particular importance. There's also another menu for this email. On the white part of the screen, underneath the date, we can see another three dots. From here, we can also mark it as unread and flag it. We can also reply or reply all if this email had multiple recipients. We can forward the email or we can delete it. At the bottom of this email, we can see we have this option called reply. This is a quick reply system, allowing us to quickly type a message and hit the send button. You'll notice we can add things like attachments to this quick email as well. I'm going to talk about attachments a bit later on. So let's send an email. To do this, we can click on the blue icon in the middle of the screen. If we have multiple accounts in Outlook, we can tap on the address at the top to decide on which email account we want to send this email from. Next to two, we can type in the email address of the recipient. If I click on the drop down arrow next to it, I can also add CC or BCC. Below that, we can enter a subject for the email. And on this main part here, this is where we can type the main body of our email message. You'll notice that the email signature we set up earlier on also appears. At the bottom of this email screen, we can see four icons. The first of which allows us to convert this email into a calendar invite. We can send our current availability or we can convert this into an event. At the top, we can type a title for this event. Next to it, we can see this purple icon. This allows us to choose what type of event it is. Under people, we can choose who should be invited to this event. We can also specify a date it should start and a time, or you can toggle all day if it's going to be an all day event. If I tap on date, I can choose from this calendar the date of the meeting. And using the handles above this blue strip, set a start time and a finish time. When you're done, click the blue tick. Once we've done that, we can set up a time zone. We can decide on the location and add a description for this meeting. For this calendar event, we might want to have it repeated. This can be done daily, weekly, monthly or yearly. We also have an option to schedule an alert notification before the event is due to take place. Let's take a look now at some of the other icons on our email screen. The second icon allows us to add an attachment. We can attach a file or use a photo from our camera roll. If I choose attach file, I can choose which of my cloud storage locations I want to take a file from. Or if the file is stored on the iPad itself or in iCloud Drive, we can choose the bottom option. For each attachment, I can attach a copy or just put a link to this file instead. This file is now attached to this email. If I want to take a picture to send along with this email, I can click on the third icon, which is for the camera. The last icon gives us some text editing options. The first one allows us to choose whether we want to type a title, a subheading, 
or the main body of an email. We then have some basic formatting options, for example, bold or underline. We can do bullet points or numbered bullets, and we can add a hyperlink to another website on this email. When you're ready to send your email, you can click the send icon in the top left corner of the screen. You'll notice at the bottom of the app, we have three icons. The first of which is for emails. This is what we've been talking about so far. The second icon is for search. From here, we can search for specific contacts or contents within an email. You'll notice at the top of this search panel, we can see some of our existing contacts. If we want to add a new contact, we can click the create button in the top right corner of the screen. From here, we can add in all of their details. Let's now have a look at the last icon for Outlook. This is the calendar. Let's start by talking about how we might navigate this calendar. In the top left corner, we can see which month it is. And if I click on that, I can quickly go to a different month or different part of the year. We can also choose a different layout for this calendar. In the top right corner, we have four options. We can view the week. We can view our agenda, which is simply a list of all upcoming events. We can view all events for the day, or we can go into month view. Let's talk about how we might create an event on this calendar. To do that, click the plus icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. This is very similar to what we discussed before. We can type a title for our event and choose a custom icon. We can choose which people should be invited from our contacts. And we can choose a start date and time for this meeting. We can also set it to all day if that's applicable. Just a reminder of how we did this before. We can click on the date and choose a different date from the calendar along the top. And to change the start and end time, we can drag the handles for this blue bar here. The top handle changes the start time and the bottom handle changes the end time. Click the blue tick when you're finished. Once again, you can choose a time zone and a location for this meeting. You can add a description. And if you want this event to repeat, you can choose at what interval. Below that, you can set a custom alert time to be notified before the meeting is due to start. And if you're in the habit of sharing your schedule with others, you can decide whether you want to be busy or free during this time. So that's the end of this tutorial for Microsoft Outlook for the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.